Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, back again today with a new logo design tutorial video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how you can create this logo using a tool called the Shape Builder. I'm gonna show you how to create the logo from the concept all the way to vectorizing it using a very cool tool that a lot of people don't use to its full ability called the Shape Builder tool. Before we get into it though, make sure you press that red subscribe button down below. When you do, it's completely free. It just lets you know whenever I upload a video. So if you wanna see me on your homepage, press the notification bell as well, and you'll see my videos every time I upload, which is about twice a week. This video is brought to you by Logo Design net just a little heads up if you want to see this video tutorial in a written format and see a lot of other tutorials go to logodesign.net click the link down below in the description which will take you there to this tutorial that you can read and it also has new tips and tricks that are put in there that you may not see in the video without further ado let's get right into the tutorial Okay, so here I have a sketch of a sort of a logo. It looks like a really strange one. Did it in my iPad. It's a cool logo design. I like it. And the concept is there. The execution hasn't been done yet, but we're going to do it today. And as you all know, Illustrator and the software side of it is about 5% of logo design. It's nothing really compared to the idea concept. So I've drawn this up in my iPad using Procreate. And basically what we're doing is we're going to be using the Shape Builder tool to build around this. The first thing I like to do is just take a look at it. And I don't really need this as a template. I've just got it here to show you. But it's sort of as a rough guide of where I want to put my work and my lettering. First thing I'm going to do is draw out some guides. I like to have my guides here as basically my X height, but it's not really. This is like the ascender height and I want my X height to be here. So this line down here is the baseline in typographic terms. This is the X height and this is the ascender line. So this is where everything is going to be lined up and I'm going to change these as we go. I've locked my guides, which you can do by going to view and going down to guides and unlock or lock guides. So I'm going to bring out my square tool here. I'm going to make sure it's a stroke and no fill. And I'm just going to eyeball this for a minute because as you can see, this logo up here, we've got to draw the F first and we want to go down and create this sort of really easy looking path. Now there are a few ways that you can do this, but the way that I prefer to do it is with the shape builder tool. I don't like using the pen tool all the time because you don't get some of the consistencies with one path. So what I'm going to do is I've got my X height here, and now I know I need a curve at the top. As you can see up here, there's a curve or a circle. So what I'm gonna do, and this is gonna look very strange, but I'm gonna go ahead and draw a circle exactly from that line to where I think it should be to over there. I'm gonna bring out another square over here. And I want it to intersect. I want these paths to intersect here. If I go into outline mode, I can see it more clearly, but I want this to intersect to the right there. Now, I don't want these bits at the top. So what I'm going to do is bring this down and I'm going to bring them down to they're exactly where the line is here. And that's because there's anchor points on this circle here on the right and i want them to join up all together i want to keep everything perfect if that makes sense now this is going to look really strange again but to create this sort of o up here we need to create two full circles we need to create one circle here and one circle here so we're going to create the negative and the positive space and this is where it confuses a lot of people so what i'm going to do with this circle is copy and paste it and then I'm going to scale it down using Shift and Alt or Option. I'm going to shift it down to about here. I'm going to zoom right in and press Command Y to go into outline mode. Now this path, as you can see, when it's not in outline, looks like it's intersecting with this one, but it's not. What we need to do is highlight it and bring it to this part over here, exactly to where this anchor point intersects. Now the problem is the one over here is not intersecting to this path. So what we need to do is scale that. Hold shift and scale it until it meets. Press command Y and now we've got 
this sort of idea here. Now, what I can do now is I can highlight all of this and I can press Shift and M, which will go to my Shape Builder tool over here. As you can see, when I scroll over these, I'll just hover over them with my mouse. You can see that they're creating these new shapes and this is to outline what's happening with the Shape Builder tool. If you don't know about the Shape Builder tool, it's basically the same as the Pathfinder tool. It's the new upgrade. It's been around for a while and it took me a while to get used to it because I used to do everything with the Pathfinder function, which I still have over over here for when I need to do a quick adjustment. But this way is just so much easier and you'll love it. So what I would suggest to do would be to, for the first one here, I want to go ahead and get rid of this part in here. Because what we want to do is have everything here correctly done. So I'm going to copy this over here just to show you. But I'm going to highlight this, Shift and M, and if I go and press Option, you can see my cursor has a little minus or a plus. So I'm going to press Option, the minus is there. Now, when I don't press Option, it's going to have a plus. Now, when I drag here, it's going to get these two shapes to become one. If I drag all the way up here, this is going to be another shape. If we come all the way down, this is going to be another one. The problem is we've got these two shapes in the middle that we need to get rid of. So I'm going to go ahead and press Option and drag up and it's going to get rid of those. Now, if I go ahead, highlight it and basically put it as a fill, you can see here, aside from these two little funky dudes going over there, we've got this sort of shape that we've created out of these square rectangles and a circle. That is the pretense of this logo and how we create it, but it can get confusing and overwhelming for people who are new. So just take your time with it. So now that we've got the F up here, I'm not worried about the crossbar here, but we want to go down and basically create the same thing. I want to create it so it's symmetrical and it looks consistent. So we need to create this circle part down here. We're going to do that by just highlighting these circles bringing this down and I want it to fit on the ascender line over here. Now we can edit this all later if we need to. So now I've got this part down here, this circle area is going to be the connector to the A over here. Now with this A, what I'm gonna do is just create another, basically another circle, just like so. And this circle is going to work pretty well. What I'm gonna do now is test this out by dragging over all of them, copy and pasting over here, highlighting it, and then going through my Shape Builder tool here just to get rid of anything that doesn't need to be there. Now you can see here we've got an issue. So when we have this issue here where we're highlighting on one part of the circle, it means this inner one hasn't overlapped enough. So we need to go ahead and fix that. And we do this quite simply, highlighting and just extending it out ever so slightly. You might want to get rid of your smart guys to do this so that you can do it more accurately boom get all this down together now we're starting to see it sort of come to life you can see how it's sort of working for us so i highlight that and get rid of it because at the end we'll be doing all of that and then i'm going to go ahead and bring another one of these bars over here you don't want to be creating different bars when you create new shapes it gives you more opportunity for inconsistency. So always copy and paste your work. If I've got like an O over here, I'm not gonna go ahead and create a new one and hope for the best. I'm always gonna be going ahead and copying and pasting. So I'm gonna copy and paste this because this is going to be, if you can see up here on the top, it's gonna to be this part of the A, but it also intersects into the W. And obviously we can change a lot when we do this. So what we're going to do is bring this right the way up without holding shift, obviously, so we can keep the same thickness. And then I'm going to be highlighting this O again, which is now going to be another connector. And we're going to do this again, highlight this over and highlight it over one more time. Now that looks confusing, but if you've been following along with this tutorial, you may have to rewind. Basically, it's all about trial and error and getting used to it. When you understand the tool, you'll understand what to do when you face an issue. So what I'm going to do now is to stop myself from ruining everything. I'm going to go ahead and alt drag this up here. I like to copy and paste all of my work so I can always go back to it if I need to. Now I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to start actually doing the shape building. So I'm going to be taking away shapes and bringing shapes in. So shift and M or to the shape build tool to the left. I'm going to start building this together. So anything that isn't supposed to be there. I'm not worried about little tiny dots that are maybe on the screen just yet. All right, we've got an issue here, so we need to fix that again. So we do that by just increasing this a tiny bit. Check the outlines of it. That should definitely work now. You can always fix this later when we have the chance. Bring that together. Highlight all this W. 
get rid of these. Oh, and this is where it starts to come into its own. Now you can see here that if I go ahead and copy and paste it, which I'm going to do again over here and outline it, there's a few little mistakes in here. It doesn't look right. And that's because we need to sort of do typographic things now. So typographic things are like illusion. So overshooting, a lot of people are confused about overshooting. Overshooting is where we go above or below ascenders or baselines. So these guides here, where they're meant to stay at to give the illusion that they're actually the same width, height and flow in the typeface. It's kind of confusing at first, but if you saw my Google video, I talked a bit about why it wasn't a perfect circle and it was because they were overshooting. Here's me being all design lecturer. So what I'm going to do is because I know I need to make some adjustments and put the crossbar on the F. I'm going to go ahead, and highlight these up here. And this is why it's so easy just to change. And I'm going to bring them down with my arrow key like so. I'm going to zoom out making sure that it all works correctly. And this part down here, you can see there's an issue on the A. If I get rid of these lines, it looks like the F on the baseline is going below the A, but it's not. And that again is because of overshooting. And I can prove that it's not actually because it's exactly on the same line. So what I'm going to do instead of like increasing the O, I'm going to decrease the F descender because the reason why all of these letter forms here are optically looking smaller than they actually are so we need to go ahead and move the f descender up so whenever it's a circular descender or ascender or a circular baseline or x height you must fiddle around with it until it looks correct and it takes time to get to know what is correct that looks okay to me now what i'm going to do is bring that back because what i want to do is create the crossbar of the f to go where it should go now if i put it exactly where the a is or roughly it's not going to look too good so i'm going to actually bring that down with the arrow key until it goes to a place that i kind of like and it's a lot of trial and error when it gets to this point now when i've got my f crossbar here all sorted like i want it to i'm looking through my work here and i'm seeing what i can fix later on now you can see i've got these little parts here where they shouldn't be paths and we can fix that but we would have to like go in and sort of edit them all and create them to be a bit smoother and maybe use the pathfinder function a bit later but what we want to do is generally create a logo that flows well and this is where it comes from so at the end of creating it you should have something that looks like this in black now if you want it to be super modern i'm going to give you a little tip here just add a gradient to it if you want to put this on your portfolio and create it for a modern company you can add it on a background or anything that has i don't know multicolored backgrounds but what i'm going to do is simply go to my gradient panel up here highlight my work bring my gradient panel in highlight this as a gradient and then i'm going to go ahead and i think i'm going to go for a pink and a purple that might be a bit too much but this is this sort of flows pretty well and this looks like a floor logo so it's a flawed logo because it's supposed to be flow but it's flawed get it now there's a lot of tinkering you can do with this kind of logo and there's so many possibilities so hopefully this ultimate shape builder tool video has helped you understand a bit more about the capabilities of this ridiculously simple tool and see what you can do without even knowing how to use the pen tool or other functions inside of illustrator this is really what makes illustrator the most powerful and most promising vector design software simply because of the ease of use and the speed that I took to create that. Now, if you want to do your own one and post it somewhere for me to look at or for our design community here to look at, you can go to the link down below as well. And there's a Creative Insider Discord link where you can join a community of other designers that are on this channel where you can show your work, receive critique, get cool discounts to the resources section in the chat. And you can also chat to me whenever I'm on, which is like every few days. I want to thank logodesign.net for sponsoring this video. Remember, if you want to check this video out in a written format, click the link down below in the description. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, join if you want to join and tag me on Instagram. My sort of Instagram handle will be up here somewhere for you to go ahead and follow me. Tag me on Instagram with your work with the Shape Builder tool and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you soon. Goodbye. Peace.